There are a lot of contenders vying for the middleweight twin championship, so picking a standout bang for the buck winner is a tricky proposition. In this class, you have such competitors as the FC07, the SV650, the Ducati 797, and the KTM 690 Duke. Now, in being faithful to the Ducati mothership, I'd pick the air-cooled 797. But the $9,000 MSRP shared between the Ducati and the KTM give them both the boot out of this category. Son of a bitch. I might just throw a random fry in the middle. Oh, who's faster? That was good. I'm here at the Kawasaki Good Times Demo Day here in uh, Long Beach. Uh, it's actually Irvine, but it's pretty close to Long Beach. And I'm uh, going to be taking out the uh, Kawasaki Z650 naked and the 900 RS. Pretty cool. All right, Z650, parallel twin, 68 horsepower, about 51 foot-pounds at 6,500 RPM, about 7,500 bucks. This is my favorite class of motorcycle twins, the parallel twin. Sort of a Casio watch meets uh, LED tachometer here. Minimal controls, cable clutch, pretty compact, fairly upright. High beams, mirrors I can actually use, that's pretty nice. Got the floppity uh, Japanese uh, clutch lever there. It's a hallmark of the uh, Japanese makes. You got your strap on? Right? Yeah, I'm good. We'll be taking out that Root Beer 900 RS in a little bit, that should be fun. We got hazards, jeez, my Ducati doesn't even have hazards, that's pretty sweet. It's compact, but it's, it does feel a little heavy. All right, here we go. Parallel twin. Hmm, I like it so far. Nice, very smooth. Hmm, going right. No, oh, brakes have a nice bite to them. Real nice. Nothing like new brakes. Got those nice, smooth, flat rotors. Don't have any miles. Get that nice stick on the initial brake. Really compact, like I feel really far forward. Tank is pretty short. Seat is uh, pretty comfortable. It's got some good sponge to it, but it's uh, supportive. It's scalloped, I think, yeah, it's scalloped, so it gives you a little bit of back support there. But yeah, like I said, this is my favorite class of, uh, of Japanese motorcycle, the twin, parallel twin. So this competes obviously with the SV650 and uh, the Yamaha MT7 or FZ7. Turns in pretty nice. Nice crisp ships with the uh, gearbox, both up and down. Yeah, nice that it's got a gear indicator, it's pretty sweet. Six speed, obviously. Yeah, pretty good pull. Very linear in how it pulls. Basically, you get the same amount of power through the entire rev range. Just you get a little bit more of a you get a little bit of a different vibratory response in the bike above four grand, I'd say. And I'm sort of the the 98 percentile. My uh, knees are nicely tucked under the tank here. You can see that. Let's try the old click down from a stop. So nice gearbox. So I was in fifth gear. Just click down through all the gears. Pretty nice. Neutral is easy to find. So gearbox is nice. Really good. Clutch is set up for the old two finger grab. I gotta like that. Very smooth. Gets a little buzzy around four grand. Pretty responsive motor. A lot of torque down low. Below four grand, you definitely can lug it in gears. I'm in fifth gear at 40 miles an hour. No shake really. Suspension's pretty comfortable. It's it's stiff but has a little bit of compliancy to it. Good shock control. Go over the bumps. It eats up the bumps pretty well. This is a great little, you know, city cruiser. Just leave it in third gear here, see how it does. Gotta go around the puddles. Not bad. So that's the nice thing about a twin, is you can just sort of be lazy with your shifting. Yeah, it's pretty nice, you can short shift it. 
This is a great first bike. Really well rounded. Oh, going on the highway. I'm gonna get to ring this thing out. Let's get it in first. And here we go. Let's see what this thing will do. Yeah, pulls pretty well. Like I said, it uh, has a very linear pull. The only dynamic change really is it gets a little grumpy over four grand, starts to shake things up a little bit. You can feel it in the chassis. Gotta watch out for these puddles because uh, California doesn't get that much rain. So when it does rain, that oil residue on the road gets dispersed into uh, the, you know, the water obviously on the road. So it gets pretty slippery, you gotta be careful. But they don't make too many of those 900 RSs in the cafe style, I guess. I don't know, I think it's the coolest bike they make. This is a fun bike. I definitely could ride this every day. The only place I would fault it is the initial turn in. It doesn't feel super stable to me. It doesn't promote a lot of confidence. Six gear. Yeah, plenty of passing power. You don't have to downshift. Plenty of power. There's 80, very stable. A little bit of head shake when you put the brakes on at high speed, but eh, otherwise not too bad. This thing's wobbling like crazy up here, this turn signal. You know, I get spoiled by the Ducati and oftentimes I use that as a baseline. It's not really a fair comparison. I mean, that's just an incredible bike and the way it handles, accelerates brakes. Uh, it's got so much character. So it's hard to bounce these bikes off that as a paradigm, but this is a great bike. I haven't ridden the new uh, SV650 since it's come out. I rode an MT7. I really like that. I thought that was a really cool ride. This compares fairly well. I think it's got a little less power. It's 68 brake horsepower on paper. Like I said, it's about 51 foot-pounds, and then both of those numbers are 6,500 RPM, which I believe it does sort of run out of steam about, you know, seven, eight grand. I think the MSRP on this bike is around 7,500 bucks, which is, I think, a pretty good deal. As motorcycles go today, that's a lot of bike. See how she turns? Turns well. A little funky mid-corner. I don't feel like um, the front end is really well planted, but turns in okay. Comes out of the corner nicely. Gauges are pretty legible. I'm not crazy about this Casio display. At a quick glance, it's a little dim. Motor's definitely got some character. Put a can on it, probably uh, liven things up a little bit. Nice pull in six gear at 50. Great downshifts. This is a really nice gearbox. Very crisp, very tight. Easy to shift. Clutch is a little grabby. It's a family truckster. Sweet! Pretty good flick. The nice thing about the twins is they pull pretty much the same in every gear. Especially these lower power twins. You got plenty of torque in every gear. Yeah, I'm starting to feel the seat. Now the seat is a little bit hard. Especially like in the coccyx, right behind your butt, like where you're to the base of your tailbone, that area. A little, a little too firm. Kind of, there's kind of a hot spot there. The spike has ABS. I don't know if it has any other goodies on it. fun definitely enjoyable bike yeah if you're like in the market for a uh, first bike I always say go with the twins uh, generally if you don't have any cash go with a nice SV650 all right but this is uh, if you want to go new this would be a great bike all right that was good Nice bike. Uh. 
I was I, I, I teared up the day I sold my ZX14. I'm all, what was I doing? Now it's time to give the Z650 a fancy banana score. Kawasaki is fairly comfortable with a firm and supportive seat and plush ride, but because the back of the seat creates some hot spots, it gets a 4 out of 5. You sit upright with a neutral posture on the Z, with all the controls in easy reach, and with a 56 inch wheelbase, there's plenty of room to stretch your legs for long rides, it gets a 5 out of 5. I wasn't thrilled with the dim set of digital gauges which were hard to read in low light conditions. However, this was somewhat offset by having a gear indicator and a fuel gauge. In addition to a complement of good quality switch gear, it gets a 3 out of 5. This class of motorcycle tends to be bare bones when it comes to electronics. Power modes, quick shifter, trash control are all features not offered on this motorcycle, with ABS being the only option. For the price though, it gets a 4 out of 5. The engine delivers linear and usable power with plenty of torque and ample top gear acceleration. However, there's some unwanted buzziness above 4000 RPM that keeps the Z from earning a perfect score. It's a 4 out of 5. The gearbox is one of the best I've encountered on any bike for any price. It's a 5 out of 5. The suspension and chassis delivered a very comfortable but controlled ride with good shock control and flickability. However, the factory 17 inch Dunlop Sport Max tires are a bit underwhelming. For this, it gets a 4 out of 5. The brakes offer ample stopping power with great feel and are even better than the Z900. They get a 5 out of 5. The great ergonomics, smooth engine, and comfortable suspension make this a great commuter bike for city or highway. The lack of a windshield, however, gives it a 4 out of 5. With plenty of grunt, braking, and flickability, and only 400 pounds wet, this setup makes for some great canyon riding. It gets a 5 out of 5. This bike will easily do track days, but the lack of a windscreen gives it a 3 out of 5. There are a lot of contenders vying for the middleweight twin championship, so picking a standout bang for the buck winner is a tricky proposition. In this class, you have such competitors as the FC07, the SV650, the Ducati 797, and the KTM 690 Duke. Now, being faithful to the Ducati mothership, I'd pick the air-cooled 797, but the $9,000 MSRP shared between the Ducati and the KTM give them both the boot out of this category. Son of a bitch. So let's just narrow focus to these Japanese milieu of middleweight cruisers. The trio are all priced about the same with similar performance numbers. With the FC07 offering the best all-around acceleration, braking and handling, the SV650 offering the best engine sound and looks, and the Z650 offering the most comfort for city or highway commuting. <laughs> Truthfully, separating the wheat from the chaff really comes down to brand loyalty, with the Z offering little advantage over its competitors. For this, it gets a 3 out of 5. Which brings the total average score for the Z650 to 4 out of 5. So that's it for the Kawasaki. See you later.